Hello, Calvary Baptist Church. Good morning and welcome to our 1030 service. We're super glad for everybody that could be here in person and everybody at home checking in online. Uh, please make sure to share the service, leave a comment, let us know how, what you think and uh, a prayer request or anything like that. Uh, please join me as we say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now, your humble servants and your sons and daughters. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to get back here, to be in this sanctuary, to lift up your name and praise you. Father, we pray that your spirit will fill this room, fill our praises, Lord, that you will hear them and accept them. Father, I pray that you bless Pastor Jeff as he preaches, Lord, move in his words, Lord, let you speak through him. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, good morning, Calvary. How's everybody doing today? Oh, come on. We can do better than that. We've been here two weeks in a row now. Are we not excited about that? Come on. All right, that's a little better. We'll keep working on that. We'll see if we can make it three weeks in a row. Then we can get really excited. Uh, all right. Well, for those of you who don't know, my name is Harris Knob. I'm the Children and Families Pastor here, and we are here for our Calvary Kids Time and today, we're going to be wrapping up our series we've been talking all month about uniqueness, about how God made each of us unique. We've been talking about how God made us and how we can make a difference. So we're going to wrap that up today by talking about how God made us for good works. God made us for good works. Before you get into that today, we're going to have a little fun with a new game called Will It Float? This one's pretty easy. We're going to drop a bunch of random stuff into a bucket of water and see if it floats or not. So we will have an item up on the screen. If you think it will float, I want you to put your thumb up in the air. If you think it, it will float in the bucket of water. If you do not think it will float, I want you to give it a thumbs down. All right, simple enough. All right, let's go for it. Will it float? <laughs> So thumbs up if you think it'll float. Thumbs down if you don't think it won't. First object of the day. A rope. Will it float? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Will the rope float? I'm seeing mostly thumbs up. The answer is... Yes, it will float. All right, second item of the morning, a lump of clay. Will a lump of clay float, yes or no? I am seeing mostly no's. Let's see what happens here. The answer is no. All right, third item of the day coming up here in just a sec. A jar of rocks. Will a jar of rocks float or not float? See, mostly thumbs down, a few thumbs up. Let's see a jar of rocks. And it will not float, no. Very good. All right, fourth item of the day. A can of nacho cheese. Will it float or not float? Thumbs up, thumbs up. I don't see mostly some thumbs up, some thumbs down. Can of nacho cheese. No, it will not float. All right, last one of the day, a propane tank. <laughs> will it float or not float? Seeing a few thumbs up, mostly thumbs up. Let's see. A propane tank, it does flow. Very good. All right, good job. Most of you guys got all those right, so those must have been pretty easy. We'll have to find some uh, harder things next time to find out whether it'll float or not. But great job, everybody. This morning, though, like I said, we're going to be talking about uniqueness and how God made each and every one of us for good works. God made you for good works. Now this morning, I've got some items here up front. Pastor Jeff is wondering if we're starting to bribe people. And though I'm not above a bribe, um, that's not quite what we're doing yet to this morning. This morning, we're going to be talking about gifts. 
and specifically about spiritual gifts. But I know for a lot of our kids, they've already started back to school. Some of them have already had some rough times having to quarantine and all that. So I've got a gift for our kids this morning. So if you are in fifth grade or under, you're welcome to come up here and grab one of these bags as a gift real quick. So really quick, I need all our kids, fifth grade and under, come up here, just grab a bag. Just grab a bag and go back to your seats. One rule is you have to let your you have to give it to your parents and let them tell you what you can and can't have right now. <laughs> All right, real quick, real quick, grab a bag, grab a bag. All right, awesome. There's a few left over, so after the service, if our students really want a bag, they can come up to me and I'll give them a bag. All right. But here's the thing about each of these bags. Each of these bags, a lot of them have some similar items in it, some similar candy, some similar prizes and stuff. But each of the bags is a little bit different. There's a little bit, there's a different candy bar, there's a different prize. Each of them is a little bit different. And the truth is, God also gives us gifts. You know, the Bible talks about how God has given each and every one of us the gift of salvation. He's given each and every one of us the gift of salvation. That if we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins... If we believe in him and confess him as the Lord or the boss of our lives, he gives us a free gift of salvation. There's nothing we have to do to earn it. It's just like coming up here and grabbing a bag of candy. They didn't do anything to deserve it. They just had to come up here and get it. The same thing with salvation. God gives that to each and every one of us. But the Bible also talks about how God gives each and every one of us spiritual gifts. And for some of us, those are different gifts. God gives a bunch of different gifts. And the Apostle Paul writes about this in one of his letters in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Remember, we've talked about the Apostle Paul before, how he was someone who hated the Christians at first. But God met him on the road to Damascus, changed his life. And he went all around the world telling people about Jesus. And he wrote in the book of Corinthians... Chapter 12, verse 4, he wrote about these spiritual gifts that God gives to us. It says this in chapter 12, verse 4. Now, there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God produces each gift in each person. A manifestation of the Spirit is given to each person for common good. To one is given the gift of wisdom through the Spirit, to another a gift of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by, one, by the one Spirit, to another the performing of miracles, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretations of the tongue. One of the same Spirit is active in all of these distributing them to each person as he wills. What is that talking about? Paul is giving a list here of different spiritual gifts, gifts of wisdom, of knowledge, of teaching, of prophecy, of healing, different gifts that God has given each and every one of us. And what God wants us to do with all these gifts that he's given us is he wants us to do good works. Paul's talking about there how God gives all of us different gifts but we're all supposed to work together to do the good works that Jesus has planned for each and every one of us. So here's what I want to encourage you guys today. Each of you kids, you have different talents, different abilities. We talked about this all month, how God has made you unique. He's given you all different gifts and abilities. I want you to try to find some way to use your gifts, to use your talents in some way to do good works this week, to do God's good works. Find a way to do something good this week, whether it's just being nice to your brother and sister, maybe it's playing a song for your mom or dad or a friend, if you can do music, whether it's being nice when playing sports or out of recess or whatever. Find some way to use your talents, the things that you're good at, the things that God has gifted you with to do good works. And for the parents and the adults here, here's what I want to encourage you guys today. Some of you already may know what your spiritual gifts are, the spiritual gifts God has given to you. 
Some of you may not know. I want to encourage you to find out. If you need ways to find out, we have ways that you can test and things that you can take to find out what your spiritual gifts are. But if you already know what your spiritual gifts are, I want to encourage you, tell you find some time this week to tell your kids about it. Tell, the, tell your kids about the gifts that God has given you and how you're trying to use them to do good works. Because guys, as parents and as adults, we are the examples to our kids. And if they see us using our spiritual gifts to do good works, they're going to do the same. That's why I encourage all of us today. God made all of us, kids, adults, teenagers, to do good works. That's what I want to encourage you guys to do this week is to do the good works that God has planned for us. All right. Now, before we go, a couple things. First, we're going to go over our memory verse for the month. It's going to come up here on the screens. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And it says this. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Talking about those good works that God has planned for us. All right, so we're going to say this all together. I want to hear everybody saying it. There's not as many of us here this morning, so I want to hear everybody saying it on three. Ready? One, two, three. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Ephesians 2.10. All right, great job, guys. A couple quick announcements for the kids' ministry. One. We are still renovating our kids' space. We still have a ton to do. We're getting a ton done, but we still have a ton to do. We're going to have some work days probably later in the week this week, probably like Thursday or Friday. So be on the lookout for emails, text, information about that. We need everybody who can come out. Even, you know, we're hanging drywall, but we're also just moving stuff. So if you can just lift something, you can help. So you don't have to be. I'm not the most uh, mechanically workmanship inclined I don't even know what the word is, but <laughs> that, that tells you something. But I think I can at least say I'm at least helping a little bit, right? Yes, he's nodding his head. So I'll try my best. So we need everybody. If I can come out here and work, you guys can come out here and work too. I promise you that. So be on the lookout. We'll be emailing, texting about those dates throughout the week. So be on the lookout for that. And then lastly... This Wednesday night, we're going to be starting back with our Kids on Mission series. We had our summer adventures. We wrapped that up last Wednesday night with our water wars. We got plenty wet. It was a lot of fun. But this week, we're going to be starting back with a brand new series called Kids on Missions. We were doing this before we took our little break for COVID. Um, but we're going to be talking about different missionaries that go all around the world and how they tell different people all around the world about Jesus Christ. So that'll be starting this Wednesday night. So kids, looking forward to having you there this Wednesday night. It's going to be a ton of fun. All right. Now, I'm going to say a quick prayer here and just ask God's blessing on the rest of this service. But we're also coming to a time in our service where we take up our offering, guys. And if you feel led to give back a portion of what God has blessed you with, I want to encourage you guys, either bring it down here front. We've got the plates down here up front. You can bring it down here. Or you can give online. Guys, we appreciate every little bit that you guys do because honestly throughout all of this we could not have survived without your just generous giving and we are so blessed and so thankful for you guys and for all that you have done uh, to just allow this church to continue to minister and continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ so thank you so much but I'm going to say a prayer and just ask God's blessing on this offering and on the rest of this worship service so if you could just bow your heads and close your eyes Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you have blessed each and every one of us, that you have given us not only the gift of your salvation, God, which is so incredible and so amazing, but you've each given us spiritual gifts. You've given us the opportunity to do your good works. God, I just pray that throughout this week, God, you would present opportunities to each and every one of us that would allow us to do your good works, Father. God, be with this offering that we're about to take. God, just bless it. Use it in ways that we could not even fathom, not even imagine, God. And Father, just be with the rest of this worship service. Open our hearts as we, as we worship here and as we hear from Pastor Jeff, God. Take away all distractions, Father, and just help us to focus on you. We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I 
Amen. Thank you, Miss Kathy. What a wonderful song this morning. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the truth of that song. And I appreciate the effort that goes into and the time that goes into to be ready for a church service. And the, uh, glad to see you guys here with us today. We appreciate you coming in. Um, we are at, at Calvary. We are disappointed this morning that Pastor Harris only had a, like, 
four bags of candy to pass out. I don't know what's up with that. I, and then he got it before I could get one. I mean, did y'all notice that? I was going to get one and eat it while I was not really preaching, I was going to say, but not, not this morning. So <laughs> you don't want me to have snacks while I'm preaching because that leads to an afternoon of preaching, right? So if you have your Bible this morning, Psalms 119, Psalms 119, we're going to look at the first eight verses. And uh, we're just going to, and I don't know that I'm going to preach through every section of the Psalm 119, There's, and I'll give you some of the highlights about this as you're turning over. Um, Psalms 119 is actually one of the longest chapters in the Bible. It's got uh, 22 sections of eight verses each. If you look at the heading of each section, there's a Hebrew letter, and in the Hebrew, each verse in each section starts with that letter. Now, in the English Bible, it doesn't do that. But in the, in the Hebrew, it does. And I don't think if you have a Greek Old Testament, I don't think it does that either. But in the Hebrew, it does. And it, it's four. And the primary theme of Psalms 119 is, of course, God's Word and God's ways. And it's the practical use of that. Now, if there's ever been a people, and uh, I'm running ahead of myself here. Let me read my scripture, and then we'll get to this, because I'm, I'm pretty excited to preach this message this morning. It's an important message for our time. So let's look at this. Psalms 119 verses 1 through 8. And the, the beginning of this subheading on, on this is Aleph, which I think I've just really butchered in the, it sounds better in the Hebrew. Has anybody in here ever done any Hebrew language work? Uh, can I tell you something about the Hebrew? It is, it is not a pretty language to speak. It's just not. We, when we go to Israel, you, you'll hear them and they, it's a really uh, guttural, I mean, it, where's Deborah Cannon at? She knows, because it's, it's one of those languages that's just not comfortable to speak. It's good reading and it's good studying, but like our writing goes on the page like this, okay? We go this way, okay? Hebrew goes the other way, okay? I mean, they go from the other side. That on the, if you see it in writing, that's, that's some of the differences between that. But Psalms 119, verse 1, the Bible said, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy, thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes, O fake, forsake me not utterly. Let's pray and then we'll get into our scripture today. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you've given us. We thank you that we have this time together to come and gather around your word. Lord, I pray today. First of all, I pray for our church family, Lord, that is uh, needing prayer today. And Lord, we have so many prayer requests and so many uh, heavy burdens that are running through our church family right now. And I pray that you would be with each and every one. Lord, we thank you for answered prayer this past week in so many different circumstances. And Lord, how gracious you are that you, you've just been good to us. And Lord, we truthfully could stop and just take out and just say thank you all morning long. For the grace that you've bestowed upon our church family. I pray today that, Father, you would take this time and sanctify it and use it for yourself. I pray that you might help us as we look into this scripture today, see something that we can not just learn, not just facts about the Bible, or not just even reading the Bible, but Lord, help us see something here that we can live. Father, how we need you. I pray that you would come illuminate the scriptures for us. We'll thank you for all that you do, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. The author of Psalms 119 is not known. There's a, a lot of discussion about who it is. There's a lot of really learned commentaries that believe that Jeremiah wrote it because they think it was written after the destruction of the temple and after the destruction of the priestly order. There's a lot of folks who would give Jeremiah credit for the psalm. I wouldn't argue with that, but they, they're smarter than me, so I'm mentioning it, so you might want to do some work on it too. There are others who give it to David. They say, well, we think David wrote all of Psalms 119 because it looks like, and if you want to make a note of something to go look at, go look at Psalms 19, and you'll see a parallel between some of the language between Psalm 119 and Psalms 19, okay? So if somebody said David. Now, if those guys didn't write it, I think Gary Lyons wrote it. 
That's my, one of my thinkings is Brother Gary might have had something to do with that. Well, you can ask him, all right? I, he won't remember it, but you can certainly ask him, all right? So, but Psalms 119, and, and it's one of those chapters that gets blown by because it's such a long chapter, okay? It's, one, it's intimidating when you start to look at it, all right? And they wrote it with the, the system that I was talking about, the, with the letter, the LF, and I'm probably, again, I'm butchering that, but it's, that would be in every one of those verses, or in every one of those, uh, every verse in 1 through 8 would begin with that in the Hebrew Bible. I mean, so it was, they intended for it to be verses that could be memorized or verses that could be meditated upon. It was something that they would take and use in their day-to-day life or something that they would use in what, they, in what they were doing. Now, the nation of Israel was blessed like no other nation had been blessed by before. They had the oracles of God. God had sent them Moses. God had sent them David. God had sent them Solomon. God had sent them the rulers. God had sent them every, all of those things, and they, that God had given them the, the law. They had absolutely, the scriptures were written by them and for them, all right? They were a people that were people of the book or should have been people of the book. But what happened to the nation of Israel? Now, I, I want to preach on this a minute because it has a direct bearing on where I'm going with this message, all right? They fell in love with their systems, but not with Him. Okay, they fell in love with their temple, but not with Him. They fell in love with their rituals, but not with Him. They knew those things inside and out, but they did not get to know the heart of God. They did not get to know what God was doing in their midst. They, they did not understand. They, they were somehow or other, and there was a, a disconnect with them. And I, I'm going to preach on this here in just a minute. Guys, they, God had given them very plainly what he expected. God gave them very plainly what he asked of them. God made them promises. Listen, keep my word and I will do. Go back and read the book of Deuteronomy, and it is just a long reminder, Moses reminding, Joshua reminding, hey, guys, listen, God will be good to us. God wants to give us the land. God wants us to possess if we will walk in his ways, if we will keep his word. And I want to say this today, God, God kept his word. He, he gave them what he promised he would give them. And then he also let them have the consequences for their choices. Okay. Now, and I'm preaching today, and I know there are people online who are watching this message too, but there are people that I, I love with all my heart, and I think sometimes in my own life, I live sort of like I want to live and do what I want to do, and, and I sow my wild oats, I sow my oats during the week, and then Sunday I pray for crop failure. Okay, I mean, but God let Israel have the, the consequences. God let Israel have the outcome of their choices. Now, guys, you, you got to see this, okay? They were still going up to the temple. They were still going up the Song of Ascents. Those are the songs that are a little bit later in this book. They were, they were still keeping their rituals. They were, still, uh, they were still the people of Israel. They were still there in the land. All of those things, they, they physically were doing these things, but they were not doing them from the heart. It was not a heartfelt thing. The sacrifices that God ordered for them or the, the times of the Passover when they would keep that turned into, instead of a reminder of the fallen need of God to redeem them or the fallen need of the, taking the blood to f- forgive sin, they turned it into a, a family holiday. It turned into a vacation time instead of what God intended for it to be. Now, I know I'm, I'm going a long way around here, but I want you to stay with me here just for a second. It was not until they came back from the Babylonian captivity that they start to understand really the depths of their failures. It was not until God had removed them. It wasn't until 70 years later in Babylon, and I've, I'm just, I just read the book of Daniel this past week, and I read Daniel's prayer. And you ought to go back, if you had not read it, go back and read Daniel's prayer. And I think it's in Daniel 5 or 6, somewhere right through there, where Daniel prays and confesses for the nation. Now, I want to tell you something. It's one of the most important prayers, I think, in the whole Bible because you've got a man there that is repenting for his country, okay? He's repenting for his people, and then he's repenting for himself. And it's, it's an amazing thing because Daniel, it's one of those Bible characters you read through there, there's not a whole lot of fault to be found in Daniel. Daniel was a good man, and Daniel was a godly man. Daniel was a wise man, but Daniel, he added up the years, and he, he said, this is why we're in trouble. You gave us your statutes. We knew your statutes, but we didn't keep them. We knew what you asked, but we didn't do it. We didn't give our hearts to that. We gave lip service to that. We gave the appearance of that to that. Now, and I, I want to stay here for a second because this is an important part of this lesson. 
Guys, it's not owning Bibles that makes us godly. It's not living in a Christian nation, claiming to be a Christian nation, that makes America be a Christian nation. Okay? Guys, for us to be a Christian people, we've got to do more than just know the Word of God. Okay? The Word of God has to take root and it has to be followed. It must be lived out. What if all of us that are watching online or those of us who are here today, what if, we, what if we said, you know what, Lord, I just want to live out the gospel truth. I just want to live out the Bible truth that you have already shown me in my life. What if God never showed you another thing? What if God never gave you another thing, another new thing from the Word? What if that never happened again? You got, and I have too, enough of God's truth and enough of the revelation, the illumination that God has given us. We've got enough truth to go from here to heaven on and thank God every day for what He's already shown us. Guys, it's, and you've got to see this because we are a nation of Bible studies, and I, I love Bible studies. That's what I do. I enjoy Sunday school. I enjoy the, the get-togethers, and we're looking forward to getting all that back going. We're, we're meeting tonight to talk about some of the plans going forward for getting all that back up and running, all right? So you, you'll hear in the coming days. But I've got to say this to you, and because this is an important part of what's going on. Notice what happens here. That blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, I want to tell you something there about the law. And I read this this week, and I wanted to be sure and share this with you guys. The, the lost person, the unsaved person, looks at the law of God, and he sees an enemy that only, can only condemn him and not help him. The unsaved fear the law because they know the law identifies how wrong they really are or how lost they really are, okay? To the legalist, the legalist looks at the law and he sees it as a master that robs him of his freedom. The legalist sees the law and it becomes a slave to the law, according to Galatians chapter, all of the book of Galatians actually, where the legalist decides he's going to pursue the law instead of the relationship with God that he ought to have. Now I want to say this to us today and I'm not going to preach on this right now. One of the easiest things in the world to do is to slip into legalism the longer you are saved. The longer I walk with God and the more I know Him, the more careful I have to be not to develop a legalistic or a pharisaical attitude towards those who are outside or towards those who are trying to figure out, okay? Be careful and, be, and beware of that because it, it's a dreadful error. Somebody said, Brother Jeff, I'm pretty sure the Pharisees had some good qualities. I'm not saying they didn't have good qualities. I'm just saying when Jesus showed up, they couldn't figure him out to save their lives. I, and when God's plan unfolded right in front of them, they rejected God's plan and kept theirs. I'm, I'm not saying they didn't. Somebody said, well, they gave alms. I'm, I'm sure they did, but they never gave their heart. They never let the Word of God take root in them. And Jesus went around preaching and teaching and doing good, and they just walked around scratching their heads. Now, I know God let, us, God let them be blinded so we could see, but I'm going to tell you something today. Their religious system blinded them pretty good, too. So you have here the Word of God. Now, And, and I'm going to say this, and preaching this message in the next week or two, you're going to hear some more of this. How many times in my life if I had gone back to here, would I have avoided trouble that came to me because I chose my way over God's way? How many times in my life would I have missed a storm had I heeded God's word instead of my own? Okay, there's a word here that's only here in this whole psalm. I think it's only in here two times, and that's that word blessed. And it means happy. It means to be blissful. It means to have joy. And by the way, when you look at this word blessed, it starts with this because there's a great blessing that follows. Look, look at this next part of this. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Not just who know, but who walk. You know something about walking. We were talking to Miss Sadie a while ago, and she's hidden here somewhere. But Miss Sadie, is, uh, she's walking and getting around pretty good. But if you've noticed her, she's not toddling. All right, she's walking. I mean, with purpose, she's walking. She just goes. Now, I remember my kids, and when my kids started walking, and it was because they were, had, they were disadvantaged, all right? And there's two chief disadvantages to being a heel, okay? One is really short legs. That's enough. And the other is a really large head. 
I don't, and somebody said, why is your head so big? Uh, got all this brain in it. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody said, what hat size do you wear? Uh, about the biggest one they make, probably. All right. But my kids, when they were little, I don't know what the deal was. They would start walking, and they, their feet and their, their legs were so short. And thank God, if they were tall people, they probably would have had brain damage to this day from falling from such a height. You know. Somebody said, Brother Jeff, being short is good because you don't have as far to go when you fall. You know. But my kids would get up and get going, and their head would get the better of them, and off they go. Right? I mean, and, and Christina, when she was little one time, Lord help her, she got to stumbling across. We had a fireplace at the time with the, the, the rock out in front of it, all right? And we were going to have, I'm not kidding, family pictures. Don't tell your kids they got family pictures because they will find a way to be scarred, beat up, bruised half to death the day of the picture, right? Christina, the week of the family picture, stumbles and falls and lands and hits her, her head from here to here on the front of that fireplace, <laughs> And scraped from here down. And then we, we had to go have family pictures. And they were like, what's up? I said, she fell. I, she, head got the better of her and down she goes. All right. I mean, so she, she just landed right on her head, right on the front of that fireplace. And I won't never forget that. Corey was about the same. Jared too. Jared too. But walking is, is not something that is just accidental. And, and by the way, it shouldn't just be flippant. And it can't be if you're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. It can't be if we're going to walk in a way that pleases Him. We have to think about this. We have to look at it and say, how do I walk in the, in the ways of the Lord? How do I walk in a way that is pleasing to Him and is beneficial? To, now, Harris preached on that a while ago. I thought that was a mighty good message. But God has created us unto good works. For by grace are you saved, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, okay, that we should, we should do good works, those things that God has planned ahead of time for us to do. Our walk cannot be haphazard. Church, we live in perilous times. We live in perilous times. We live in times where it, it's going to cost something to be a Christian before everything is said and done. We live in perilous times. Having a Bible on the shelf is not going to help you when it comes time to that. Can you imagine how many mistakes would be missed in this world? And what if, how many behaviors would we change if we were to say, you know what, before I do this, before I decide that, before I go there, before I participate, before I give my assent to, before I go that way, what if I sat down and said, does this pass the screen, does this pass the filter of God's Word? What if I take the filter of God's Word to my life? What if I take God's Word to the filter of my attitudes or the, the attitudes of my heart? Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the Lord, the, the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and they that seek him with the whole heart. Now, I may not get past this verse today. We're pretty good at segmenting out our lives. We're pretty good at trying to draw distinctions in our lives that I don't, don't think that God draws. We say, well, this is my home life. Okay, and this, this is my work life, and this is my private life, and this is, we break out all these different segments, we, we, cause we, it helps us to compartmentalize to where we try to keep things separate, and we, and I want to tell you something today, which part, and whichever part that you don't give him the keys to, whichever kingdom in your heart you don't let him be Lord of, before everything is said and done, will get you in trouble. Whichever kingdom of your heart you don't surrender to him, you, you will, at some point in time, that will come back. There will be a rebellion. There will be a, the, the kingdom of your heart will not stand without him being Lord of it. The psalmist says, we're going to seek him with my whole heart. That means I'm going to seek him with my home life. Okay, I'm going to seek him with my home, my work life. I'm going to seek him with my private life. I'm going to seek him in whatever other compartments you want to divide out. And neighbor, how you've got that going on. I could preach the rest of the afternoon and never get to where your kingdoms of your heart are, but you know what they are. But what if, what if I said, you know what, in all these areas of my life, I'm going to seek God's word. I'm going to seek God's ways. 
And I'm not just going to know them, all right? I've got to walk them. That's got to be lived, okay? So he said, blessed are they that seek. And I'm going to give you that word seek here right quick, too. That word seek is not something that we just happen up on. Has anybody else ever gone shopping with your wife? And, she, and so you get there and you go, what are we looking for? I don't know. Uh, you're going to be there a few minutes, Bubba. You know what the really old guys do when they go shopping? They go ahead and sit down. There are little benches up at the front of the store, and they sit down right there. Got a good Wi-Fi signal, not too far from the bathroom, and they just sit right there, waiting on the wives. But you know what she's doing? She's seeking. She's just going around looking. Now, my wife, and I don't know about yours, but my wife will go, and she won't buy anything at full price. Not happening. And which sort of aggravates me because I'm like, Lord, help me. I mean, because Terry will go and she'll say, do you like this? And I'm like, yep, we're taking that home. No, it's not on sale. I don't care. Looks good on you. I want to buy you that. No, I'll take it back. I have quit buying her clothes. First of all, I am a horrible judge <laughs> of what will fit her. Okay, I, I don't, I'm not good at that. Somebody said, y'all been married? We've been married as long as Gary Lyons has been alive, it seems like sometimes. I am not a good judge of what will fit her. So if you are good at that for your wife, I'm happy for you. But Brother Jeff does not have that, all right? So what do, what do we do? She goes seeking, and she will go through there, and she will touch everything on that rack. We were looking for shirts for me one day, and they had a thing, clearance. And she was over, and she said, extra large, double X2, double X3. I said, no, 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 no I'm good. Let me, uh, got it. I will lose weight before I do that because I look like a dress, all right? A kimono or something. I don't know, all right? But she's seeking, and she will touch every one of them. She's going, she's going, she's going, and I go over there, and I go, you know what? I don't have one that color blue. I'll just get it. And she's like, no, wait a minute. Hold on. Go ahead. Flip, 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 flip. She's just going through, going through, going through, going through. She's a careful seeker. You know why? Because she doesn't have unlimited funds. Amen. <laughs> she has more funding than she thinks. Don't tell her, though. How do you seek when it comes to the things of God? Are you the careful seeker that, that is careful to know, that is careful to dig, or that, that's careful to dig into it a little more? Or are you the person who just sort of goes through and do like I do when I go shopping? Somebody said, when you go shoe shopping, what do you do? I order them online. You know why? Because that's the only place in the world that's got shoes that small. Somebody said, buy them in the kids' department. For what? So y'all can mock me forever on the internet? No, no, I don't think so. No, I'm, I know better than that. But you know, I mean, for us guys shopping, unless we're hunting stuff shopping, or unless we're music stuff shopping, or unless, we're, unless I'm book shopping, if I'm going book shopping, you might as well bring a lunch because that's going to take a few minutes. How are you about seeking when it comes to seeking him? Because if we're haphazard, won't we look like the Jews of old? Won't know a treasure if we found it? Won't see the answer to our prayer standing right in front of us? Won't see God's ways if they're unfolding right before our eyes? If we're not careful, we won't see it. Guys, I... My heart is stirred in this, and I, I, I want to preach on this just a minute. There's an awful lot of foolishness that's happening in our country today that would not be if we would just take a minute and just say, guys, wait a minute, what does the Bible actually say? What do the Scriptures actually say? And let's, let's get back to... Just a plain preaching and teaching of God's Word. Just a plain preaching and teaching. And I don't mean ugly, and I'm not talking about being hard, uh, or treating somebody with disrespect or anything else. I'm just saying the simple light of the Word of God is the light that we need. Can you imagine how much darkness we would miss if we understood that God's law, God's Word, is a lamp and a light, and we need both? Especially in dark times in which we're living. 
especially facing into some of the decisions that are going to have to be made in this country in the coming weeks or the coming months. What if we simply said, what can I do that will please God? What can I do that will be according to God's Word? How should I, how should I then live if I'm going to be a godly man in dark times? How, what should I do if I'm going to be a Christian person in the day in which we live? Now, I want to tell you something today. I heard a fellow say this the other day, and I sort of got tickled about it. But he said, and, and I loved it when he said it. He said, you know what? He said, you ever go to a worship service where the beginning of the worship service is, how does everybody feel today? And he said, I've, I've been to those, and he said, I've got to tell you something. Every time I go, I am offended because we're not here to worry about how I feel. We're not here today based on what I feel or don't feel. I mean, have you guys ever come to church and you just didn't feel like being here? I have. I'm just being honest. Have you ever come to church and you, you just, and somebody said, Brother Jeff, what would you do if you did what you feel, how you felt? I'd probably go sit on the beach a day or two. And I wouldn't take many of you with me. I'd take one. <laughs> if she'd go, she's shaking her head pretty hard. Yes, she would go. You know what we've got to do? We've got to get beyond. Our seeking needs to go beyond our feelings. Our seeking needs to go beyond our emotions. Our seeking needs to go beyond what's popular. Our seeking needs to not settle because where we live or where we're from or, or what's expected of us, whatever. Listen, our seeking ought to lead us to God's Word that's not moving, that's not changing, that doesn't vary from week to week or day to day according to what the temperature is or according to which way the political winds are blowing. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, we ought to be people of the book. God help us to be people of the book, not just a Bible read, not just a Bible owned, not just a Bible possessed, not even just Bible memorized, but Bible lived. Bible lived, and it's, it, we need to as Christians. Guys, somehow or other, we've, we've got ourselves convinced that we don't have the freedom to speak. We exactly have the freedom to speak. We ought to be speaking. We ought to be speaking. We exactly have the freedom to live our lives, and we ought to be living them. Now, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm not saying there won't be ridicule. I'm not saying there won't be harsh questions. But I am saying there'll be the peace of God. There'll be the blessing that comes from knowing I am a person of the book. I'm a person of the Bible. I take God at His word, and I live God's word. Look at the last of this, and I'm going to finish this message Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimony, seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts. What's that word? Diligently is what my Bible says. Careful steps. The Bible even tells us in the day in which we live, and this is a New Testament word, but the word is circumspectly, and it means to be careful of where you put your feet. Be aware that there's a, there's a danger. Be aware that there is a trap. Be aware that your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks around seeking whom he may devour. Maybe we ought to be careful of the direction we pick. Maybe we ought to be careful of the, the thickets we walk ourselves into. Maybe we ought to be alert. Guys, the days of haphazard living for the church and for Christians are drawing to a close or need to. The days of haphazard what we do for God, the days of haphazard being messengers of the Lord Jesus Christ, the days of being a follower of Jesus Christ in name only, our word only, ought to be coming to a close because right now we don't just need people who are following Him in word, but in deed. In the life that's lived, and in, in a life that shows the difference between what's right and what's wrong. In the life that shows the difference between what's blessed and what's not blessed. Okay? And then this, the next part of this, Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Now, I want to say this. In verse 5 and 6, you've got a very human person saying, Lord, help me to do that. I'm having a struggle. Ready? Is there anybody else in the building that struggles with this too uh, besides me? Jeff Hill does. I, don't, I can't tell you at the times when I've read through the Scriptures and I will read something and it's happened to me lately. I mean, reading through the Scriptures and there's something that I've read a hundred times, all right, that I've preached on a hundred times. And I'll read that and I'll go, hmm, man, I don't, Lord, 
I don't, how did I miss that reading through there? Right? I mean, and you go through there, and the, the law of the Lord, and it's a mirror, and it shows us us. We look into the perfect mirror, and it shows us our reflection. We can see what we really look like. That's another reason why. Can I ask you guys a question? Does anybody here have a house that doesn't have a mirror somewhere in it? Right? Let me see. Any, anybody? The teenager in this room who hates baths the most will still look into a mirror on the way out the door just to make sure, right? I mean, and, and they don't care. They just want to look, though. They just want to make sure they don't, they don't have something actually drooling, you know. And not that teen, all teenagers drool, but some of them do. Right? I mean, they'll go by the mirror and they're looking. There are, they are young ladies in this room right now. You make yourself late to everything you do because you take too long in the mirror. You're in there making sure. Nope, I don't like that. Makes me look fat. You know, I mean, you do it. You're checking. You're just looking, and this is not a good color. And I'm going to change it. Oh my gosh, I don't know why. And I, wait, I used to, <laughs> I used to work with somebody, at work with somebody years and years ago, who coming to work one day. Evidently didn't check the mirror before they got there because they had put their eyebrows on. These are actual eyebrows. Okay, they, Lord help me. Somebody said, yeah, we know. Preacher, I mean, you're going to ah, you know. You can tell. Somebody said, Brother Jeff needs a haircut. Yeah, because these, I mean, they're not cooperating at all. And you guys who are laughing, what do you get, 50? And then, then laugh, big boy. I'll come talk to you, all right? But. Lord help her, she did not. She didn't check the mirror. She just, she was in a hurry. She showed up at work, and she had one that it was perfect. It was just on, on point. Bam. And then she had one that went, whoo. And I was like. And we were talking. And, she, and I was like. Okay, <laughs> and I finally said, I said, you might want to look in the mirror. And she said, mind your own business. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and about an hour later, she came back by me, and it was fixed. I said, and she said, don't ever just say, go look in the mirror. Just say, hey, your eyebrow is connected to your ear. No, you cannot give me subtle hints. You have to say, that's crooked, that's bad. I mean, she was, and she was mad at me, and I was like, I said, you might want to go look in the mirror. Because <laughs> I learned a long time ago, be careful how you critique women. I mean, all right. So, and, but every now and then, though, I run by somebody, and I just want to say, have you looked in the Bible lately? <laughs> Have you looked in the mirror? I mean, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'll say, might want to start reading your Bible. And you're going, whatever. And I'm going, man, come on. No, wait a minute. You're, you're heading off here. That's a bad direction. And I don't want to hurt your feelings. So I'm saying, hey, let's, hey, we're going to hand out Bible reading charts. We want people to start. Yeah, you, some of you guys really need to start reading your Bible. All right. And because... Guys, how often do we check our physical appearance in the mirror a day? Now, can I tell you something that most every lady in this room has in her pocketbook right this minute? It's right. It's a little mirror. No? Just walk by the big one on the way out the door, and it is what it is, right? Nope. Miss Terry's got one in hers. Some of the rest of you have got those too. And, and I'm not preaching against mirrors. I'm saying, listen, when we look into the perfect mirror that is God's Word and it shows us us, what do we do? In this psalm, you've got somebody who struggles with the picture he sees and the decisions that he ought to make. Look at the last of this. I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes, O forsake me not utterly. He gets right. 
He sees the error and he fixes it. He sees the, the bad direction and, and he, he decides, you know what? I'm not just going to be a hearer of the word. I'm going to be a doer. Church, and for those listening online, this I have a something I'd like for you to do this week when you're going through your scripture time. First, I have a challenge for you. Are you daily taking time to look into God's Word? Are you daily taking time? Now, I know you don't have hours and hours, and I get that. I'm, I'm not saying that it takes that. But you ought to every day have some time in God's Word faithfully. And then you ought to have some time in your life when you look into the mirror that is God's Word and start saying, wait a minute. That's not like I need that to be. And I need to get right here. Or you know what? I've left that out. I need to start doing that. It was the absence. It was not that the children of Israel didn't love that God had redeemed them. It was not that they didn't love that God had gave them the prophets or that God had given them the scriptures. Okay? They missed the heart of God by not reading the scripture in the way that they could see God in it. They saw it as a list of do's and don'ts. They saw it as a bunch of rituals to live by, and you have to follow this. But they never did understand the heart of God behind it. And I want to tell you something today. If we read the Bible and we miss the great heart of God, we've not really read the Bible. Would you bow your heads, please? I'm through preaching. Maybe you're in, in our service today or online, and you're needing to hear this message and what to do with it. And I say today, with all of those who struggle, He still hears and answers the prayers of His people. Get right. Ask God to help you, and He will. Let's pray together. If you'd like to come and gather around the altar this morning, please do. Father, we thank you for this day and the blessings that you've given us. We thank you that we have this time together. We pray that your blessings would rest here upon our hearts. And Lord, help us to be people of the book, people of your word. Lord, not just to look a certain way, but Lord, that our lives might be led after a way that would be pleasing to you. Hear and answer the prayers of your people today. Jesus' name. Would you like to come and pray? We'll wait for you.